Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with bacon, cheddar, and spinach strata. That's right, where my geologist at? Yes, I believe this is the first time we've done a video for a recipe named after a rock formation, which does seem appropriate since this savory bread pudding meets breakfast casserole totally rocks. And above and beyond being delicious and beautiful, it's also one of the great all-time brunch items if you're serving a large group. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get our bread soaking in the custard. So what I have here is a one pound day old loaf of French bread. And yes, fresh will work, but day old is easier to cut and works a little better here. And there's two ways you could prep this. We can do this by just slicing the bread, or as I'm gonna do here, we can cube it up. So I'm simply cutting slices and then cutting those in strips and then cutting across to make cubes. And while just using slices is a little quicker, I really do prefer the cube method as I think the texture is better. So we will go ahead and we'll cube up that one pound loaf of bread. And once that's set, we can transfer that into a large mixing bowl and move on to the custard. So in another mixing bowl, we're gonna crack 12 large eggs to which we will add some kosher salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and a little or not so little shake of cayenne, as well as a pinch of freshly grated nutmeg. And then once we've seasoned that up, we need to add our dairy. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour in some heavy cream. And if you want, you could use half and half instead or a combination of cream and milk or just milk. That's really up to you. And we will review those choices on the blog. And then we're simply gonna take a whisk and mix this thoroughly. And by the way, by increasing or decreasing the amounts of bread and custard, you can adjust how bready or quiche-like this strata is, which is something else we'll go over on the blog. But I did wanna point out you can change those ratios. You are, after all, the data of your strata. And no, I'm not a Trekkie. I just couldn't think of another rhyme. But anyway, like I said, we're gonna whisk that up, at which point we will pour it over our bread cubes and give that a toss with a spatula. And once that's mixed up, we'll just let that bread sit there soaking up that custard while we move on to cook the bacon. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump one pound of sliced bacon in a cold saute pan, set over medium heat, and we're gonna to wanna to cook this bacon crisp. So don't be in too big of a hurry. And as I may have pointed out before, when you see this foam forming on the top, you know you're getting close. And mine was looking pretty much perfect right here. And once we've determined our bacon is cooked enough, we'll go ahead and drain that through a strainer. And by the way, please do not discard that bacon fat, or as I like to call it, pig butter. We'll use that to grease our casserole dish, which is the next step. So we're gonna take your fairly standard nine by 13 rectangular baking dish, and take about a tablespoon of that bacon fat and brush it all over the bottom and sides. And then once that's set, we can start building these luscious layers. So step one here, we're gonna transfer in exactly one half of our custard soaked bread cubes and spread that as evenly as we can over the bottom. And it's probably not a bad idea to press it down a little bit with your spatula. And then on top of that, we're gonna sprinkle over exactly one half of our grated extra sharp cheddar cheese. And I feel kind of silly telling you you can use any cheese you want, but I will anyway. Although personally, I really do think the cheddar works best here. But anyway, we're gonna apply half our cheese followed by our now cool enough to handle bacon. And we'll spread that over in a nice even layer, which I didn't do a very good job of. So the bad news is that's one of the worst jobs I've ever done distributing bacon. But the good news is I'm gonna know exactly where that piece with all the extra bacon is located. So I got that going for me. But anyway, we're gonna scatter over our bacon much more evenly than I did, at which point we can top it with our cooked spinach. And if you want, you can use frozen spinach for this. Totally works fine, as long as you squeeze out all the water. Then once our spinach is down, we'll go ahead and top that with half of the remaining cheese, which I believe since we already used a half would be a quarter of what we started with. See that kid, you're learning cooking and math here. And then the last layer of course is gonna be the rest of our custard soaked bread cubes. So we'll dump the rest of that over and spread that out as evenly as possible. And again, I think we wanna give that a little pressing with our spatula. And once we've done that, we'll go ahead and scatter over the last of the cheese. And then once our strata has been prepped, we have a few options. You can cook this immediately if you want, or you can wrap it up and put it in the fridge for anywhere from a few hours to overnight. Or a third option, which I'm gonna do, is simply let it sit on the counter for one hour before baking. And the theory is the longer you let it sit, the longer that bread has time to soak in that custard and all those other flavors. But anyway, like I said, I let mine sit on the counter covered for one hour, at which point we will unwrap it and transfer that into the center of a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes or until that bready custard is set. And after 45 minutes, it should look great and be ready to eat, but I do like to do this one optional step. I'll switch my oven from bake to broil and just broil the top for a minute or two to brown it up a little more. 
Just give that cheese on top a little extra caramelization. After which, if everything's gone according to plan, your strata should look like this. So that is optional. And if you're going to burn your strata, don't do that step. But I do think it looks nice if you can pull it off. And then this is usually the time I tell you you have to wait for this to rest, but you don't. Let's go ahead and cut this into 12 pieces while it's still piping hot. Because by the time we portion it and plate it up, it's going to be perfectly rested and ready to eat. And I should mention, what appears to be me not making even cuts is actually just a brilliant strategy to give my guests a few options for how big of a piece they want. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So we'll go ahead and cut that up and grab a spatula and lift out a piece. And check it out. We did it. We have strata. So let's go ahead and transfer that onto a plate and dig in. And while we do have some nicely defined and lovely layering here, none of that would matter if this didn't taste incredible, which I'm happy to report it does. I mean, really, bacon, cheddar, spinach, anything is going to be great. But when you're combining those ingredients with a beautiful, custardy, savory bread pudding, I mean, we're talking world-class brunch entree here, especially if you include bottomless mimosas. Oh yeah, that makes any brunch better. And by using the same technique, you can easily re-envision your favorite omelets. I mean, imagine doing this with ham, peppers, and onions. Or maybe sausage and mushrooms? Oh, that would be good. But you get the idea. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.